Yardı için bu çoğdan hikmi kağız ondan malın. Cem bu ngapca da bakırtan ngapçan tükürme do. Domba tükce canla kuyup şerim çar. Şoğumun çöce yancı pavrana. Tisim sancı gönce ngoğu nye. Ransım çürgün ngusum tonca pe. Çavalama namla kuyup şerim çar. Uh, thank you very much uh, for coming and very nice to see all of you again uh, and uh, uh, good morning <laughs> whose phone is raining <laughs> Okay, we chanted the uh, uh, what do you call it? The f uh, four boundless qualities: the prayer. If you think about uh, the meaning of that prayer, uh, it it really tells us that. Um, you know that in this world we live, uh, there are many uh, different people, uh, different culture, different animals, um, and different beliefs, and all, you know, different beings. Uh, but basically, we all uh we you know the the <clears throat> may all have happiness be we all beings which means everyone wishes and wants to be free from suffering uh and everyone wishes to achieve uh enlightenment or happiness uh, it's clear uh, and so for the sake of happiness uh, and peace of mind that we do everything you know we do good things we do bad things and we do many things for the sake of happiness uh, and for the sake of happiness that every individual, every society, every country is making effort to overcome suffering and to achieve the happiness, peace of mind. It's true. It's clear. Even though we different people, different animals, different culture, different beliefs in this world. But the, basically the intention, our intention, our goal is the same. No different. And uh, we have so many good things for taking care of our life very easily this 21st century. It's a uh, everything is easy. But the most things are the development of the things for only we are focusing outer world, you know. Uh, not really focused for inner development. So the problem is uh, we are suffering, we have lots of problems uh, because uh, we focus on outer world, the old development. Only that could not achieve peace and happiness that we want and that we are sort of looking for. 
So therefore, uh, we need to find the real sort of inner peace and happiness because only the, um, you know, the just a sort of physical comfort and physical happiness is not enough. No matter how good things we have, uh, luxury things we have, um, it has no use if we do not sort of develop our, our inner peace and happiness. No matter where you live, it's kind of, uh, it's difficult, you know, it's not enough, you know. So we need to find sort of real inner peace and happiness. So that's the, that's the, <clears throat> we need to understand. But how can we achieve this inner peace and happiness? Big, a big heart, you know. That can only achieve through the spiritual um, inner practice. Uh, the, the, the only mental sort of progress. So that's why I think the Buddhist point of view, in order to achieve this peace of uh, mind and happiness, uh, we have to change our way of thinking. So therefore, I think, you know, uh, uh, Buddhist teachings, the Buddha's, uh, the essence of his teachings can help how to uh, find out the, the inner peace and happiness. Uh, we are, uh, you know, looking for uh, that and uh, temporarily and uh, long term, uh, you know, we are looking for the peace of mind, you know. Uh, and that's uh, Buddha's teaching, you know, uh, talks about how to get the inner peace. So they are actually, uh, the, the, the great masters always say this, they are Buddhist uh, religion, uh, Buddhist uh, uh, philosophy, and Buddhist uh, science. So we have three uh, different sort of, uh, you know, uh, in Buddhism things. Uh, the first Buddhist, uh, Buddhist religion, the Buddhist religion is only for Buddhist people, you know. Uh, for example, people who um, are taking the, the vows and the, they do the prayers and uh, uh, in Tibet there are lots of sort of doing pujas, so all of that, etc. That's what we call the uh, uh, Buddhist religion. But the uh, Buddhist philosophy and Buddhist science, everybody can uh, practice, everybody can learn it. Uh, without become a, a Buddhist, um, and uh, uh, it will help you know to understand the meaning of life and how to achieve. Uh, just I told you the inner peace and uh, the real happiness, not superficial happiness, real happiness. It's not necessarily become a Buddhist, but if you study. Buddhist philosophy and science, it will help you uh, find out uh, who you are, uh, what, you, what you want, uh, and sort of it also helps you sort of bigger, uh, open your mind, you know. Uh, so the key point is you should know that how to develop uh, your inner peace, okay, and happiness through the spiritual teachings. And uh, um, not only teachings, you know, but make sure that uh, you have time to practice meditation. Uh, only sort of intellectual way, you know, understand uh, the teachings. It's good, but it's not enough. Uh, also, you have to practice on that. That's the only way to uh, achieve, according to Buddhism, enlightenment, uh, and what do you call it, achieve the uh, you know, the peace of mind and uh, uh, sort of real happiness. Uh, because the Buddha talks about that. Uh, every one of us has a mind, 
same. I just told you, we are looking for uh, happiness, peace mind, you know, uh, our basically our mind, nothing different, you know. Um, and everyone of us can um, work on that and, uh, and can change can change our uh, negative, you know, the behaviors um, uh, or negative patterns that we have uh, in our mind. So everybody can change it, you know. Um, so we have uh, actually no choice of uh, what we already are, but we can wish to change ourselves and to find our nature, to find our, you know, inner peace. You know, uh, such an aspiration gives the mind wisdom of direction. Uh, but just, you know, I just uh, uh, told you that, you know, just a wishing and just a hope is not enough. We have to find a way to put in that wish into uh, action and practice meditation. Meditation is very, 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 very important, no matter who you are. Meditation is not only uh, a Buddhist, you know, people who become a Buddhist, not only for them. Meditation, there, uh, you know, uh, so many different kinds of meditation. So uh, we have to meditate. Because meditation is a practice that uh, makes it possible to cultivate uh, and develop certain sort of basic uh, positive, uh, our human qualities. Uh, and that's why uh, people understand very well um, the teachings, but I think we do not have enough to meditate. Uh, so it's not really, it's, it's difficult to change, you know, everything. Uh, so in order to find out the nature and a weakened mind, we call this is a weakened mind. First of all, it's very important to have uh, a good foundation in order to find out the nature or your nature or your essence or your awakened mind. You need a good foundation, uh, uh, which is, you know, a peaceful mind, you know, mm, and an open mind and understand the, the, the relative view, understand the ultimate view, all of that. Uh, uh, these are very good foundation. Uh, and uh, uh, that's why these teachings and meditation on uh, this, uh, this uh, you know, will help. And also uh, meditation really uh, helps us to uh, familiarize ourselves with a clear and true way of seeing things um, uh, and to cultivate uh, sort of nature qualities that remain sort of dormant or undeveloped within us. So I just uh, let you know that the value of meditation that's the most important. If you understand the benefit of meditation, then you uh, automatically uh, and uh, happily to practice meditation. If you do not understand the benefit of meditation, and then uh, you know, uh, become sort of you know, uh, the teachings uh, in sort of your intellectual, you know, not really uh, your life and your knowledge, your uh, teachings are separate, you know, and then it doesn't really help uh, when you have uh, difficult circumstances. <clears throat> so uh, that's why, you know, we have to, the, 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 the reason for meditating is we, uh, you know, transform, right, ourselves uh, so that we can sort of become really uh, better uh, human beings and uh, not only that, but service others in a more sort of effective way. Uh, so that is the reason why uh, we need to focus uh, our inner development, uh, the nature qualities and the awakened mind. 
so uh, usually when we talk about the nature qualities and awakened mind, uh, the object of meditation is only the mind. So that's why uh, uh, we have to find out uh, the end focus and inner, uh, not outwardly, but inner um, worldly and uh, 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 work on our mind. And uh, the goal of meditation is developing our own sort of positive inner qualities, right? So if we find that, then uh, the peace of mind, happy uh, and big heart, these are, these are very important, I think. Uh, because uh, whenever I go, people have problems, you know, and uh, difficult lives. Uh, but why? That's, that's the sort of big question. Why we have a difficult time? Uh, Buddha said that, you know, and it's, it's true. We are not uh, focused on inner. Uh, the mental, you know, uh, we're not working on that. So uh, I think we need to develop our mind um, and find out really inner peace uh, and cultivate uh, uh, dedication to the welfare of others, you know. So uh, we have within ourselves the potential to develop uh, these qualities, but they will not sort of develop by themselves or just because we want them to, you know. So we have to um, really do something. And that's also not only uh, within short time. And uh, uh, as we, we shall see, the way we sort of deal with our thoughts in meditation is not to really uh, block them or, or, or feed them, but to let them arise and dissolve they, you know, uh, themselves into where they came from. I think this is the key point because I had um, people ask me, um, many questions about when they meditate, uh, they sort of find out, you know, they, uh, lots of thoughts arises and then it's difficult uh, how to stop uh, these thoughts. And, uh, but you don't have to stop these thoughts. Um, that's, that's the method, you know. You just to let them go and let them dissolve into uh, when they, where they came from or let them dissolve into, uh, if you understand, the weakened mind or the, the mindfulness, you know. Uh, in this way, they do not take over our minds or control, you know, our mind. It is not a matter of uh, doing whatever comes in, into our, um, our mind, our head, but rather of freeing ourselves from the control and afflictions that sort of dominate and obscure sort of our mind. So according to Buddhism, as you know, uh, the uh, five afflictions, attachment, anger, jealousy, um, uh, pride, you know, are this uh, principal cause of all the problems of this life. You know, so if uh, uh, one you know one has this this these afflictions, then then he or she uh, never I think experience the inner peace and uh, you know happiness. These are we must overcome through our practice meditation. Uh, and according to the Buddhist 
the sutra teachings and view, um, it takes many sort of lifetimes to purify these uh, negative emotions uh, and achieve enlightenment. But according to the Buddhist, you know, the Atlantic uh, teachings and view, uh, especially uh, the Dzogchen view and teachings uh, of Dzogchen, uh, the practitioner can attain enlightenment in this very lifetime. And that's why people like to uh, receive Dzogchen teachings. That's why people uh, like to practice. Uh, and uh, Dzogchen is the highest spiritual tradition in Nyangma. You know, Dzogchen is only Nyangma. Uh, no other traditions. Mm, they have a similar, like Karjit has a ma uh, uh, Mahamudra. Um, uh, and some other traditions, they talk about the emptiness, uh, the middle way, all of that, but it's not same. Um, um, and I am uh, very happy that I belong to the uh, Nyingma tradition because I have these amazing uh, teachings. Um, so, but it's not easy to receive these teachings, you know, uh, the Dzogchen teachings, because uh, in order to practice Dzogchen teaching, one must need to have a, a special uh, capacity to practice Dzogchen and uh, understand the correct view. Otherwise, uh, it's very commonly people misunderstand the Dzogchen view and the path, you know. So therefore, uh, in order to receive this uh, teaching, uh, we have to completely uh, the practice uh, preliminary, that's I always say. And in order to recognize the fundamental nature of mind, uh, we have to remove the problems and uh, create by sort of, uh, you know, these automatic thoughts. Um, usually when people are talking about a weakened mind, it's, uh, it's about nature of your mind, right? Nature of your mind. It belongs to Dzogchen teaching. Uh, but uh, in order to receive or practice that, we have to uh, first finish preliminary. So I think uh, I just let you know today here this Sangha, our uh, Bodhicitta Sangha, Dlu, uh, people who already have or took the refuge vow, uh, you are and you are not uh, practice preliminary. I think you have to, you should, you should practice preliminary. And another thing is if you are not taking refuge vow, and which means you are not. Buddhist yet, right? So don't practice preliminary. Mm, there, is a, there is a big difference between uh, Buddhist and non-Buddhist. Uh, what should we practice? What should we should not practice? You know? So the preliminaries and all of that uh, is also uh, meditation, uh, but it's kind of belong to Buddhist religion. Uh, so if you're not Buddhist, don't practice them. Uh, if you take a refuge vow and then you're ready to practice the preliminaries because in order to take refuge vow, you have to understand the fundamental, the essence of Buddha's teachings and you have to also uh, uh, practice meditation about uh, the peace, peace mind, mindfulness, compassion, all of this basic meditation. You have to done that. After that, you uh, then you can choose, you know, uh, uh, whether you become a Buddhist or not. So if you choose Buddhist, then you have to, uh, the next, your practice is preliminaries. Uh, there is a, there is the order, there is a curriculum, you know, you can't practice whatever you want when you become a Buddhist. I mean, you can, but it's not benefit. So, um, 
I don't know how many of you have you know, taken the, the vow, uh, and I don't know if you are practice uh, the preliminaries or not. Um, especially under my uh, lineage or uh, uh, you have to uh, go this way. Uh, first you have to practice this and then you finish then you go to next like that and then uh, eventually you receive the all completely and all these Dzogchen teachings amazing um, otherwise the teachers uh, will not teach you uh, the essence of Dzogchen teaching just to you um, you know I mean they have uh, you know okay they have uh, uh, Muhammad uh, teaching and retreat Dzogchen teaching and retreat but I don't think they really these teaching teachers uh, teach you uh, the real sort of uh, instructions um, and the essence of the Dzogchen uh, if they do they're not good teacher I'm sure then I mean that's you. You kind of you 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 are not follow your lineage. You know, um, doesn't matter. All Nyingma, Karjit, all this uh, we have lineage. So they, I know all of them. Uh, what the, the 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 structure? You know, uh, never uh, they. I mean it's a special like Malaripa and Marba, right? You know those those uh, uh, teacher and student like that kind of. Uh, student no need to uh, go through all of these teachings you know once you see or even like Malaripa hear uh, Marva's name and changed everything and that that they had that kind of special uh, you know karmic connection between the you know between them so that kind of uh, why you need to go through this and have a uh, you know good foundation in order to uh, receive Dzogchen teaching and practice uh, first do you have to develop your faith and and uh, what do you call it the belief you know because the Dzogchen teaching only comes uh, through your lineage and blessings that's the only way you recognize your true nature. There is a no way to, uh, to recognize nature mind because of you are so intelligent, because of you, you understand uh, Buddhist teaching, everything. You know. Once you have a very good connection between your teacher and your lineage, then there is a no need, uh, lots of teachings about Dzogchen. Easily understand. Telo, uh, Telo in uh, Telo in Naruba, you know, and Karjit, amazing teacher in the lineage. Uh, Telo uh, was a teacher, a uh, narrow student, and he never received uh, sort of uh, these teachings from um, him, I mean, the Mahamutra teaching. How he uh, received or got the, recognized his nature because uh, Telo uh, kind of hit. Uh, his with his his shoes on his face, he got it like that because they have you know it's not necessarily teaching you know it's it's many ways you can understand your true nature. Um, I I heard and I uh, have I have uh, lots of uh, discussion uh, this kind of teachings with a student, they say, I understand my nature. Um, 
Yes, I think so. You understand uh, your nature. Uh, maybe you recognize A, but there is a something else you are missing. So you should know that that if you, whether you recognize true nature, awakened mind, or or not, it depends um, how much you have uh, um, how you say the faith or belief. Um, with your teacher, your lineage. If you don't know about your lineage, and if you really don't know about your teacher, there is a no way to recognize true nature. That's for sure. If you think it's not, it's that's not Dzogchen. So that's why we need this good foundation. That's why we have the preliminaries. No matter what you belong to, Karjit, Gheluk, Nyingmat, we all have preliminary. Why we have this practice? Because we need. Through this practice, you, will, you can develop your faith. Right? Faith, when I'm talking about faith and belief, this is kind of religion, Buddhist religion. It's also, it's also related to the, 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 the Buddhist uh, 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 and the philosophy. It's not, uh, most people have uh, feet, but kind of blind feet, not to really understand very well. So this, uh, uh, you know, um, I think this year we need focus on how to practice preliminary and uh, maybe we can make a group, uh, doesn't matter, big group, small group, you know, maybe two people, three people, four people, ten people. Uh, sometimes we should come together and practice preliminary together. Sometimes practice just by yourself, you know. Uh, we have to, how, how we do this, we have to sort of encourage each other and how important it is to practice preliminary. Uh, because uh, it takes time, but it's fine, you know, once you, it's also, it's not just you practice preliminary. You have to find something from the practice. Peace of mind or uh, develop your faith or understand your uh, weakened mind or something. You have to find when you practice preliminary. It's not really, oh, I have to done this 100,000, 500,000. Not that, that's not the point. The point is you have to find something. Which means, for example, if you practice Vajrasattva, you have to understand how much you diminish your negative emotions. Not only practice Vajrasattva many years and a still same person, it doesn't work that way, right? Buddhist, Buddhism is actually, you have to check yourself and how much change, how can change. Well, through, I mean, when you practice these preliminaries, still you are same or not? supposed to be not the same person all the time. You have to change your mind, you know. Um, otherwise, you know, it's a kind of intellectual, right? It's a really kind of religion, you know. You just, uh, you just, uh, I mean, it's good for eventually, I mean, long term, but um, The, we need to really understand what is important in our life. Not because, oh, Dzogchen, Mahamuddha, or this Shamatha, Vipassana, these are very famous te uh, teachings, and these are very common. If, if these teachings are not really suitable, individual, like, you know, some, it's, then, then it doesn't work. It's, it doesn't matter how it is famous or not, you know. So we have to really check. We have to check lots of meditations and teachings, which one really helps in your life. You have to then focus on that, you know. 
that way, you know, because you uh, find something and really like you, it helps your life. And then that's why you are very happy to practice that, that, that meditation. It's not your sort of, uh, oh, I'm going to practice this. I hope I will change, I can change my mind. It's kind of not that kind of thoughts, you know. Oh, this is good. This is, makes sense. If I practice this, definitely I have a confidence. Definitely I can change my mind. So you have to find that kind of practice meditation. In order to find that, you have to check many things, you know. Practice this and that, many things. Understand, you have to, you know, receive different teachings from different teachers. And then also you have to find really important, find a good teacher, you know. And uh, beginners and, you know, uh, without a teacher can't, uh, uh, can take care. Uh, and so that's why uh, have a good teacher. You have to find that. But in order to find a good teacher, you have to investigate. And many times, I mean, you know, um, what would you say that, right? I went to China this time and saw lots of uh, people, and uh, they asked me just directly. They think I know that. Who is my root teacher? Can you tell me? I don't know, you know. <laughs> I told them, you are respons responsible that find your teacher. You need to check and investigate who is better. It doesn't matter who a teacher who, uh, who, who, who are, uh, you know, Buddhist or not. Teacher who are monk or not, teacher who wears the monk's robes or not, doesn't matter outside what, doesn't matter, you know. I mean, you know, you have to, who is really you have a connection, which is uh, you have a devotion or faith, that's your root teacher. So, so please understand uh, and check your life and uh, what you want. I don't know what you want. I don't know. <laughs> I, I know, only I know you want happiness. You want peace of mind. That's what I just told you. Uh, no matter who be, I mean, no matter who you are. I, all living beings want that. That, that's for sure, no suffering, that's for sure. But how, you know, that's you have to check, you have to understand how we find the peace of mind, big heart. That's very important. I always think that people just, uh, I don't know, follow each other and there is uh, no really intention or motivation. Just, um, uh, I don't know, that's waste time. You know, it's uh, you really seriously, you need to find first, you need to find a teacher and, uh, and you have to really, if you want, I mean, if you want um, enlightenment mind, if you want the nature mind, if you want peace mind, you have to very close to your teacher and ask and um, let him or her know that what's your situation, how is your meditation practice, um, then your teacher can help, right? Most teachers uh, are not really um, enlightened beings, you know. I mean, they are bodhisattvas, that's for sure. But most teachers cannot read your mind. 
uh, most teacher don't have third eye you know so you have to communicate and let them know your situation and about your mind especially then they can help that way I think that's very important um, uh, and it takes a little bit time you know to do these things that's that's okay just uh, just to do it slowly but you have you have to have you know you you really need a, um, a goal motivation because in order to recognize the, the fundamental nature of the mind awakened mind we have to remove I mean you know these thoughts and change your you know uh, not just to thoughts you know all the thoughts the past the present and the future thoughts so we have to um, start by making the mind clear peace uh, and without any thoughts then you can find uh, uh, your nature uh, awakened mind and after that we can develop a sort of deeper insight into the nature mind more deeper deeper stable more and more stable you know and more and more peace but the good foundation very important good foundation very important understand yeah my first preliminary wasn't good <laughs> at all nothing changed my mother told me you know and give me you know sweet you know, or if you practice by the Sarva today, one hour I can give you this. <laughs> okay, if you practice, if you prostrate today, one hundred, I can give you this. I, I was very, you know, little, right? Like before six years, yeah, probably around seven years, yeah, probably seven years. My main teacher was my mother, you know. Yeah, and then I finished, you know, uh, five hundred thousand because of uh, candy, <laughs> candies, and clothes, and little toys like that. That's that was okay. If I practice, I get this. Very bad intention, bad motivation. <laughs> Second, my preliminary, a eh, little bit better. The first, not much. And third was good. Right now I'm practicing fourth my preliminary. So when I practice preliminary, one after another, I get more and more something. And I understand the value of the preliminaries. Oh, that's why these Buddhist Tibetan masters, they make this progress. They make this, prelimin uh, this, this practice. Oh, that's why. You know, I understand more and more. And so that makes me so happy all the time. Oh, I always think, okay, preliminary is just enough. Hold my life. Mm -hmm. If you understand more and more, then everything includes Dzogchen, Chakchu, Togar, all this, which is the, the, the essence and seed of enlightenment mind, right? Takche, togel, all that. That's include preliminary. So you, can, you don't need to sort of suffer teaching or meditation. Once you medit practice preliminary, everything includes Buddha's teachings, your lineages. Especially if you practice preliminary, you are more and more close to your, your teachers, your lineage. You're very, you know, close and connected with them and then you get something from them there is a energies there is a blessings 
you know. I think people who are not Buddhist, very important to study Buddhist science and philosophy and then become a Buddhist, then you have to practice this, this kind of Buddhist religion. But really good religion, which means uh, reason, with the reason why, why I practice this. Not just because I believe, right? So if you understand the Buddhist philosophy, then you become a Buddhist, and then you practice Buddhist religion. It really helps. Um, okay, and uh, I think we should uh, meditate about the mind. Uh, um, most of you know when you meditate, how you do. Uh, I think there are few people, I don't know you are new, Buddhist, the meditation or not, I don't know, but if you are, then uh, when you meditate, if your thoughts appear, uh, don't worry about it. Don't try to block them or stop them, which is not possible anyway, you know. It's not possible because they are already there. And when you kind of try to stop or blow, and then another thoughts, you know, will arise. So um, one thing, right? One thing, uh, do not block them. Second thing is uh, um, not feed them, means do not follow them, right? That is the key point. If you do this, then your meditation will be okay. You know, sometimes thoughts arise and they will go back, go, go away, you know. Uh, it, it will more, you will find more nature and nature, nature, you know. So uh, that's the key point. And let your mind uh, rest, you know. And it's nature, nature state, and clear your thoughts. I mean, you know, clear your thoughts means just let them, let them dissolve, you know, and uh, recognize the nature of your, uh, your, uh, your perceptions. So actually, this kind of meditation you don't need any object. Just to recognize nature of your awareness or awakened mind, we call it. Uh, very easy and uh, very profound uh, meditation. But if you are uh, a new practitioner, then I think it is better you have a focus on samta. Better you have an uh, object. Uh, you can take any sort of sport to your focus and attention. Uh, it can be anything. Whatever you like, you can take that. Uh, that's in general. Uh, and uh, usually, When you take that object or focus on something, uh, it's something that is very good and very easy for intention. Uh, that always with us, right? With you, and that is your uh, when you when, that's your breathing. You know, that's that's very common because of it's really uh, easy, um, and it's always there, right? And it's always available, and it's very easy to focus on, you know. Uh, so this is the, this is the uh, very good one and perfect, you know. Mm. And if you try to attention on the movement of the breath and uh, sensation that is associated with the coming and in and out of the breath, then. It is very easy to see uh, the, your, your distracted, 
So it's easy to check with your mind uh, has been focused on it or not. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, when you meditate, very important, uh, uh, sit comfortable um, and uh, physically and mentally too, you know, you just, uh, and then you just uh, breathe normally and then focus on that. That's for, there is no visualizations, no recitations, that's for, you know, peace of mind, how to develop you, the peace of your mind. Uh, when you focus on your breath, you maybe can't see the breath, but you can feel something, right? You can feel something when you, uh, when you breathe in and out. Uh, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of sensation or feeling can be inside your nose or, or your body, but there is a sensation there, you know. So you just uh, uh, concentrate on that, very sort of a, very a subtle sensation, and you just do breathe out and breathe in, and then breathe in, breathe out. You know that's very simple, right? Just, just, to, it's, it's, it's a, There is a mindfulness there if you do this practice. There is a peace, you know, very peaceful there. So it's not necessary if you if you, we meditate on, you know, like for twenty minutes, fifteen minutes. It's not necessary always be mindful, always peace. But you can develop, you know, you can develop that way. So, you know, actually when we meditate, so many thoughts going on all the time, but you just, uh, you know, um, just uh, aware of that, you know, and that is very good, you know, very good, and just, uh, I think that's that's what we should do today. Um, that's why this 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 very good foundation for if you want to practice preliminary, because preliminary practice, there are lots of uh, visualizations and recitations and, you know, all of that. So if you have no good foundation, it's difficult, right? So that's why become Buddhist, become practice preliminary. You have to uh, develop inner peace and uh, mind your mindfulness. Okay, that's all. Uh, for 15 minutes. For 15 minutes, okay? Just uh, focus on your breath, uh, breathe in and out, and uh, you have to feel that. And uh, uh, you will see the, uh, uh, your inner peace. Um, and uh, sometimes if you want, you, when the, your thoughts arise, your head and you can a little bit investigate, you know, where they come from, where they go, what is the essence of thoughts, all of that, and then suddenly, bam, you know, you suddenly, oh, there is a peace, there is a nature, nature, my life, nature, my mind, there. So you just focus on that as long as you can. And then, so this, you know, this you have to meditate, not only one session, but many, many, again and again and again and again, you know, all the time, your thoughts and your, your, your feeling change, right, change, one after another. So we have to focus on more and more and practice more and more, many times, okay? Let's do that. <coughs> 